So today we're just going to talk a little bit about amyloid. Amyloid is a very weird stuff and a lot of things can become what we call amyloid. So over 30 different proteins now, maybe more, have been identified that can become the amorphous extracellular material which we call amyloid. Under normal conditions, proteins, as you know, assume certain folding patterns that allow them to do their job. This post-translational conformational change is intrinsic to the shape and configuration of the protein. When the protein is digested and broken down into little, beast, little pieces by proteinases, those are normally recycled in the system. And those oligomers are little tiny pieces, and these oligopeptides are normally soluble and can move around and then be recycled or made into other stuff. However, in amyloid, the oligopeptides start to orient and have intrapeptide bonding that creates a sheet. Rather than assuming an alpha helical pattern, they assume a beta pleated, and in this case, anti-parallel configuration that will convert the soluble oligopeptide into an insoluble substance. And once that insoluble substance appears in the tissue, that amorphous extracellular material is what we call amyloid. So if it deposits in your cornea, you might get a cornea opacity. If it deposits in your brain, you might get uh, a neurodegenerative disease. If it deposits in the blood vessel, the blood vessel can become friable and bleed. And those different types of amyloid can affect us in neuroophthalmology. So we have cerebral amyloid, and that can deposit in your brain and cause neurodegenerative disease. We've got uh, amyloid angiopathy, which causes the blood vessel to be friable and causes intracranial hemorrhages. And then we've got amyloid-related angiitis, amyloid beta-related angiitis, which means an inflammation, angiitis, related to an attack, an autoimmune attack on the amyloid itself. So the amyloid itself is causing a CNS angiitis. So these are the ways that it comes to us as primary CNS angiitis um, related to amyloid. So when we test for amyloid, we have to have special stains because it's extracellular. So the things that we are doing for extracellular amyloid testing are special stains called Congo Red. And amyloid demonstrates a unique property under polarized light. It demonstrates birefringence. So we can see apple green birefringence under polarized light for amyloid. And the reason it's important to know that is because the standard stains, H and E, will not detect the amyloid unless we're actually looking for the amyloid. And so that normally means we have to have a biopsy. So the amyloid proteins that we have to worry about can, can arise from the light chain production, which is amyloid light chain AL. So if you have light, light chain overproduction, those form the basis of the oligopeptides that become the beta pleated insoluble sheet. You can have just the amyloid protein, AA, or you can have genetic problems in the transthyretin that can lead to predisposition and production of the protein that leads to the, the final common pathway, which is the production of the extracellular amorphous amyloid. These are less common. And then we have the cerebral amyloid and cerebral amyloid angiopathy. So it's, the amyloid is kind of a final common pathway by which proteins self-aggregate into an insoluble material that deposits in tissue, whether it's your kidney, your brain, or your eye. That extracellular deposition is what causes the disruption. We need specialized stains to find it, and it can come to us in neuroophthalmology as deposition itself, bleeding from amyloid angiopathy, or the, an unusual condition called amyloid beta-related angiitis.